How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Weather Sponge 5000 and today we're going to talk a little bit more about the hurricane season and the latest Enzo outlook which does not look good for this hurricane season. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content. So to begin, let's take a look at the Enzo outlook over the next several months and you see that if you were to take a look at the Enzo outlook for the month of April, you would see that the chance of a La Nina and a neutral phase was pretty close to each other where in fact the La Nina phase was almost below 50% at one point during the hurricane season so there so the chance has definitely risen for the month of may because you see now that it's now closer to a 60 percent chance we're gonna experience a la nina phase and in my opinion i think it should be a little bit higher based on the sea surf temperatures we've recently been seeing in the nino 3.4 region which is a region synonymous with um, determining whether we'll experience a La Nina neutral or El Nino phase and that's a major concern because the stronger the La Nina the stronger the possibility is of a more impactful hurricane season where and the worst part is that we see the La Nina season peak right around September which is the most active month of the hurricane season of course it's the chance is higher for the months of April May and June but after the more uns um but going into the more uncertain months a little bit further out you see that the chance doesn't get higher than what we're seeing in September, which is definitely a major concern for this hurricane season. Now, um, taking a look at the sea surf temperatures as of recently, uh, more sickly in the Nino 3.4 region, you see that sea surf temperatures have been dropping. Now, we're, we're seeing sea surf temperatures drop down to below one degree celsius which is well below average for this time of the year to put it in perspective the threshold to be considered in a line um to be considered in a la nina is less than 0 0.5 degrees celsius where around 1.2 degrees below average um when it comes to sea surf temperatures in the nino 3.4 region and um and what's even worse is that typically during the spring months we um when there's a strong la nina we typically see the sea surf temperatures rise just a little bit before the la nina strengthens before the summer but in this scenario we're seeing the la nina condition strengthen as the sea surf temperatures continue to drop during the months of april may and june so that's suddenly something to keep in mind um that the sea surf temperatures are certainly dropping during the spring months and that's and that um to put that in perspective that hasn't happened in 22 years since the year 2000 so this is unprecedented stuff we're seeing almost impress unprecedented stuff so that definitely is a huge concern for this hurricane season and if i were to show you guys what typically happens during a la nina we typically see um, conditions much cooler and drier than average um, over the eastern equatorial pacific where sea surf temperatures are far lower than average um because we see a sh we see strong trade winds along the equatorial pacific where they're primarily facing towards the um towards the east which pulls a lot of that water away from the coast of south america and that forces up well the upwelling of the ocean around the eastern pacific which brings a lot of that cooler water that's um, further downwards into the ocean upwards as the as the winds continue to push the um, upper ocean pretty much further west away from the shore and that forces a lot of the deeper waters the deeper cooler waters to move upwards along the shore which causes cooler and drier than average conditions for the equatorial pacific and cooler than average sea surf temperatures as all well, which means that as conditions are more stable the amount of wind shear is more stable because we're seeing a lot of upper level we're seeing upper level winds move primarily from an easterly direction as a result of the upward motion that's located right around the atlantic where a lot of air is forced aloft and it's forced to spread out and diverge in the upper levels of the atmosphere and that divergence happens to move into the equatorial pacific which um, because uh, air is sinking in this region the air wants to move to where it could sink and this is an area where we do see stronger than average wind shear and a more stable environment as a result for 
less ch tropical cyclones that happen in the eastern Pacific as well as less um, low pressure systems developing overall while we typically see more hurricanes and more of an upward motion in the Atlantic as a result of how much sinking air there is in this region and less stable conditions overall in the Atlantic which encourages a more stronger than usual hurricane season and like I just showed you based on the fact that the sea surface temperatures have been lowering to unprecedented levels for the months of spring um, it could be a, a hyperactive hurricane season which is definitely a, a, not a major concern now Another thing I want to show you guys is Southern Oscillation Index. And if you don't know, really know what that means, it's another way of measuring whether or not we're in a La Nina or an El Nino because it pretty much measures the air pressure differences between two areas of the equatorial Pacific, one closer to Australia, one area closer to Australia, and we have another area that's more so closer to um, Peru and South America. And when we're in a positive southern oscillation, that means that the pressure around the eastern equatorial Pacific is a little bit higher than average, while the pressure around australia is a little bit lower than average and you see that we've been in a positive southern oscillation index for quite some time and what that means is that when there's a positive southern oscillation that means that there are stronger trade winds which again will force will push a lot of that water offshore of south america and that will force a lot of the deeper and cooler waters upwards into the um, sea surface and that will allow for cooler than average sea surface temperatures as a result of those deeper waters moving upwards into the higher um, into the sea surface of the ocean so that encourages a la nina and you see that we've been on positive southern oscillation for quite some time now and it's only sh and it only has been shedding over the past several months which has been encouraging more of an upwelling for those cooler water um, water temperatures to move further upward into the sea's surface so that's only something to keep in mind now take a look at what typically happens so um to really show you guys the index you see that um the red represents a more stronger a uh, higher pressure while the darker um while the black colors represent a uh, lower pressure and you see that um this is typically what happens during um a positive southern oscillation index or a la nina we typically see um, stronger than average pressure uh, more than average air pressure along the eastern pacific while for the western pacific it's a lot more um um or i i don't know if i should necessarily call it western because it's technically the most eastward portion of the world but in the more um right around australia you see that the pressure is lower and that encourages the winds to move in this direction forcing a lot of the water um forcing a lot of the water to move westward and we begin to see more of that upwelling that encourages cooler waters to happen while the opposite happens during uh el nino or a negative um southern oscillation so that's suddenly something to keep in mind that we're in a positive southern oscillation index and that will encourage cooler than average sea surface temperatures um to continue for the eastern um for the eastern um pacific which is definitely a major concern along with the fact that again sea surf temperatures are dropping very fast and rapidly for the months of spring which is definitely unprecedented we haven't seen that in 22 years but another thing i want to show you guys is again see i want to emphasize sea surf temperatures in the atlantic will be warmer than average this year and while there are certainly patches where sea surf temperatures are cooler than average like um look at the east coast we have seen a huge change in sea surf temperatures because just a couple weeks ago sea surf temperatures were more, much warmer than average but as a result of a multitude of troughs moving through and we currently have this upper level low that's just meandering just off the east coast um that's bringing stronger winds as well as um heavier rainfall which of course does cool down sea surf temperatures due to a lack of sunlight we have seen sea surf temperatures cool down just off the east coast of the united states but i still do expect sea surf temperatures to rebound back 
um, not only into average, but above average for this time of the year. And look at the Gulf of Mexico. Sea surf temperature is so much warmer than average. The Caribbean as well. The main Devon region, it's a little bit mixed right now, but I do expect the sea surf temperatures to become warmer than average um, as we begin to see more of the effects of the air temperature during the summer. So that's at least something to keep in mind. We're still in a positive multi-Atlantic multi-decto oscillation, so that will encourage warmer than average sea surf temperatures. And along with the fact that a strong La Nina is forecast lighter than average wind shear, this hurricane season could unfortunately be hyperactive, which is definitely a major concern for this year. So um, in terms of where I'm expecting more of the hurricane formations right around the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean, this is where I'm expecting the most is where sea surface temperatures will be much warmer than average. But overall, I'm almost expecting a hyperactive hurricane season. Um, I'm not going to give a specific numbers just yet when it comes to the amount of hurricanes, tropical storms, or major hurricanes I'm expecting. I'll probably save that for the next video or another um, hurricane season video that's coming up. I want to wait a little bit more till more information comes out before I update you guys on the hurricane season. But I just want to give a small update that the, there's going to be a stronger La Nina than forecast, and that could induce a hyperactive hurricane season. So I want you guys to make sure to stay prepared. And remember, whether this hurricane season is more active than usual, around average, or um, below average, um, below your expectations, remember, all it takes is one um, tropical storm or hurricane to really change the lives of thousands of people in a community. So don't underestimate the hurricane season just because it might not necessarily meet your expectations when it comes to the amount of tropical cyclones you are to experience. So make sure to pay, pay close attention to that. And yeah, guys, prepare for the hurricane season because it could be hyperactive. But I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. And I hope you guys all have a great day.